I mean, they're pinning all their hopes on their three-pronged midfield, which, mm. if healthy, could be one of the most devastating midfields we've seen. But the healthy part is a big, we've already big seen question mark. Can't even... Um... Yeah. So, obviously, we know Geelong held his breath when Dangerfield pulled up limp after a kick in the JLT game against Essendon. Ad we don't know the down. results. Yeah, we don't know the results yet as to how bad it is, but... There is doubt that he's going to be unlikely for round one. We don't know how bad it is. If you didn't see his Instagram escape story, go <laughs> check it out because it was quality. And then on top of that, as we said, Ablett, is, he suffered a hamstring strain as well during a match simulation. So he is unlikely for round one. So and that's a already, big round one they have against Melbourne. Against Melbourne. I mean, if they're healthy, they're going to be Incredible. I mean, Ablett and Dangerfield were one and two in the league in clearances last season. Selwood was top 15 as well. On top of that, they're all top 10 last year in contested possession averages. So if they're healthy on the park and they're working together, they're going to be lethal. It allows Dangerfield to go forward as well, which, I mean, he kicked 45 That's goals huge. last year, yeah. which for a midfield is ridiculous. And when he did go forward, Especially, I mean, there was that game against Hawthorne in the home and away where he looked unstoppable. And yeah. then even against Sydney in the in the final where he kicked, I think he kicked four goals and he looked... It just broke it yeah, open. Yeah. It just like he Rampy could threaten, couldn't, it, it threaten the game. Couldn't do anything to stop him. Stage. Which, I mean, is the question, Mark. Do you play him forward? Do you play more in the midfield? And Ablett allows him to go forward more if he's healthy. But... Again, Ablett, not just his hamstring strain, but he hasn't played over 20 games in a season since 2013. It's a long time ago. It's a question. That's a big question. I mean, 14, 14, 6, and 15 in his last four seasons. It's dangerous. Yeah. It's risky. It's it's very high-risk, high-reward situation. Oh, yeah. um, the one thing I do think about the move was that we talk so much about how well it's going to work for Dangerfield being able to move Dangerfield forward, but Gary Ablett, Pretty yeah. much started his career as a small forward, and he's a like knows where the goals are. Very good goal kicker. So even if Ablett isn't probably a hundred percent, but they still want to, want to get him in the side, you can probably chuck him down um, in the forward pocket, and he'll kick three or four goals a game. Yeah. The one thing I'll Dangerous. say about it is, do is Ab- Ablett going to give you that forward pressure that we we see now with like at Richmond, you have got the Castagna Butler. That time, no, the is, mosquito <laughs> fleet. But I mean, if Ablett's going to play, four minutes to get back who, to <laughs> Who's going to be that forward pressure at Geelong? Because they didn't have it last year. Yeah. That's why they dropped Daniel Menzel in the final yeah. series. Exactly. I mean, Menzel defensive lapses are well known, but even some of the other guys like, like Lincoln McCarthy. I mean, Hawkins is not mm. a defense. He's a tall, he's not the same obviously. player he was three years no, ago. Which we'll get to him in a second. But Lincoln Pretty McCarthy, elite, Corey yeah. Gregson, Parfit, Cockatoo, like they're all right, but they're just not. And we know Motlop as well, obviously, isn't there anymore. But they just didn't have that ground level pressure. I mean, talking about Hawkins, as you said, last year he kicked 51 goals, which is all right. It's not bad, but he just doesn't have the same presence that he once had. We saw that in that qualifying final, yeah. 50 metres out, and he handballed it off. Yeah, I mean, he kicked in, that goal. He kicked the goal from that same position yeah, against Hawthorne. Beat the Hawks. Yeah, I mean, if you look back at 2014, which where he kicked 68 goals, which was his career best. In that year, he took 56 contested marks and 97 marks inside 50. This or this season, last season, I should say, he only took 36 contested marks and just 59 marks inside 50. So that big presence that he had just wasn't there. And I said they felt it. And then obviously, Menzel did kick 40 goals, which. I think that gets understated sometimes. That's very impressive, but as we said, he had the issues with being dropped and whatnot yep. because of his defensive lapses. Back to their midfield quickly, I think Mitch Duncan deserves credit as well. He's probably one of the more underrated players in the competition. He averaged 29 disposals and kicked 15 goals, and he really doesn't get, he doesn't get, get his much due, attention. and he's not going to get any more now that Ablett's there as well. And, and even a player like Sam Menegola, who yeah. uh, will pretty much play as a permanent forward, you say, yeah. he'll play very sparingly through the midfield throughout the season. But um, it, it's, it's just great to have Menegola. Then you throw him into midfield of Ablett and Dangerfield, both out round one. And he's you're still throwing a guy who's above average. Yeah, in to the be league. able to come in as a mature age player as well. Yeah. That's, that's big. And I think, obviously, Mackie and Lonigan are two losses through retirement, which means I'd say the Harry Taylor Ford experiment's oh, yeah, over. Yeah. I'd oh, say yeah. he's back. 
I mean, he was an All-Australian half back in 2010, 2013. So that's his best position. It's part of this constant thing they do. We talked about Hooker last week. Yep. Even things like in the JLT, they're playing Easton Wood as a forward. Why send them? Why take them out of their position to try and fix a problem? And in the same scenario, you just create, create another, another problem. One. Yep. I, don't, I just don't understand why they do that. But I think he's... Best position is down back. Obviously, Lockie Henderson, who's actually probably going to miss the first couple of rounds as well. He's had knee surgery, and then you've got likes of Jed Buse, Tom Stewart, Tui providing runoff half back. But I think, yeah, their forward line is the big question. I think Tim Kelly's one to watch. So he's picked 24 in last year's draft. He's a mature age recruit. He averaged 26 disposals and kicked 26 goals in the waffle last year. He can play that Motlop role. So. And he's been very exciting throughout the, yeah, the, two, the JLT games. And even long. AFLX as well. He was oh, of right. course. You reckon the, a uh, couple Stuart, of zoopers. You reckon Cremieri gets a game? Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, he picked up off the rookie list. No one really wants him. Like, he's gone from a player who was quite a decent player he's to... A, he's a really, yeah. like, even just throughout his years at I always thought he was a really weirdly sized yeah. key forward. Because he, he played more as a key forward... It's kind of that in between. Yeah. I think that was more when really Jordan Hurd was still developing, yeah. but he can't. He can't. Doesn't seem to be able to play small, yeah. and he's not got the frame to play as a big forward. So it's a really interesting spot. And I think the other question for them is just so obviously we know the elite talent with Danger Selwood, Ablett. You can throw Hawkins in there if you want. It's great, but they just they're not developing their young players anymore. Their drafting hasn't been great. I mean, if you look at their guys, twenty five and under, <laughs> yeah, like twenty five and under, they don't jump off the list actually. Well, they're not. I mean, yeah. that that was something they did. That was something they did really well. That's how they built at, their the dynasty. Of like, yeah, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Yeah, yeah. Those those years when they were winning premierships. That's what they were doing really well, and they've haven't. Dropped off, but no. they're still a contender. In comes Chris yeah. Scott. I mean, so all... like Jed Buse, Lincoln McCarthy, Nakai Cockatoo, Tom Stewart, Parfit, Guthrie, Thurlow, None of Kolodajny, them a... Parsons, no, not here. Paul and Smith. They're all 25 and under. They don't have a positive rating. Yeah. Oh, well, according, uh, according to, to champion, champion data. data. Yes, but that's just the flog with an opinion. That's more a big so chunk. than that. That's it's... a big chunk of your list you just read out. <laughs> yeah, but it's that's the young guys coming through yeah. next, and they just... I mean, some of them could be really good players. I mean, we know Guthrie. He's shown a bit sometimes. I'll not hear anyone bash Kim Guthrie. No, he's just... one of my favourite players in the league. Plus, he's got him. that Latrobe connection. <laughs> of course. <laughs> what about Zach? Yeah. <laughs> that, he... wind, that wind down at Cadinia Park and blow him out of that stadium. Oh, oh yes. He's got well. no muscle on him. It's all right. He's, but... he's got a little bit to, to go. I think they've got two years to win a premiership. And then they're going to have to rejuvenate that list. Because yeah. the players that they've got, like Ablett, we know he's 33 years old. Patrick Dangerfield's at 27. Salwood, Salwood's 29. 30. He's getting up there, yeah. And we saw with the injuries, he's got he's, there's wear and tear there. Tom Hawkins, 29. Lockie Henderson, 28. Yeah. They this, they got that list for now. And they, they were two years of winning a premiership. They recruited that way as well. Like Lockie Henderson is yeah. just over yeah. 28. Yeah. Zach Tui is 28. The guys Taylor's they've brought the, the guys they've brought in from in the previous seasons through trade and free agency. Yeah. Uh, uh, guys that are just filling holes for the next couple of yeah. years until they can develop some young guys, but they don't have those they young guys to develop. Guys, yeah. And if you look at, like, you could compare them to North Melbourne a couple of years ago where yeah. they were that close, but still they just, just not a step behind. The, those and they're reloading. Yeah, I mean, so two or three years from now, what could this club look like? I think it's a bit harsh to compare them to North. I, no, I think, I think there like, is a lot more talent what, in this team than there was long North. Term, but, yeah, have, absolutely there. But I do understand with the two consecutive the, prelims, North had that as well and they've fallen off completely. And if the talent's not coming through, like, like, there will be a drop off. Yeah. Well, we know they got Gary Ablett, but have they improved on their weaknesses from last year? No, not really. I mean, I don't think adding then why as are good they as a Ablett is, contender? as good as Ablett is. Well, because they made the prelim last year, so that's why people will say that they've made it for two years and they are a perennial finals performer. But and three, this... fi- th- they've won three and lost eight. Their record yeah, since know, the 2011 recently. Grand Chris Final. Scott. Yep. I know, uh, some of it might be holding on to muscle memory of what happened. What they need to do is improve their opening quarters because their fourth of that is 20.7 and their against is 24.2. And also, this season, it's going to be a lot harder for them. Uh, they have home games, as in Geelong home games, against GWS, Sydney and Melbourne. That's the only team, like the top eight teams they'll play they got nine in games Geelong. At- yeah, they, they have a lot, but What's most it of now? them GMHBA. Who knows? GMHBA. But most name. of them, most of them against the bottom feeders, the easy beats. Yeah. Whereas last year they managed to steal games against Adelaide, Port, yeah. Richmond, the well, Giants, and then they drew with the Giants. Whereas they're not going to have those games to yeah. steal this season. They're most likely going to win nine games 
at GMHBA. They've, they've got nine games. They're probably going to win nine. Yeah. They need, just need to win a couple more. Yeah. But they're playing they easier finals. teams there this year. So yeah, so they're not the getting harder the hard teams ones are away, are away. Whereas outside of Victoria, they lost last year. They lost to the Suns, the Eagles, and the Crows twice. And, and if you look, good point. so they're not they're and, not good outside. of And this. if you look at the teams they played twice this year: Sydney, Melbourne, Richmond, Hawthorne, and Gold Coast. It's pretty hard. Mm. Yep, tough run. I think, I still think they're going to finish in that four to six bracket. That's my prediction. Home and away. We're yeah, talking. You, you can't write them off top four. Um, yeah, I'd say around that. I think maybe three, three, three to six. Yeah, three to six. But I think they'll bust in the finals again. Yeah, I, I think they're definitely top four. And top four. Hopefully, if they finish top two, they get a home final this year. 